My 24F husband, 26M, abruptly adopted a Burmese python. It terrifies me, and I want to rehome it. Six months ago, our corn snake unexpectedly died. My husband and I were both very upset. He was a cute little guy and still very young. My husband has owned several small reptiles during his lifetime, and he told me he was thinking of trying a milk snake this time instead of a corn or a garter. Instead, two months after our corn died, he came home with a baby Burmese python. Apparently, it's always been his dream to own a Burmese. Not only am I pissed that he got something like that without consulting me. On the upside, where we live they are legal. But I had several reservations that have only grown since we've owned it. I have Gad, and that thing triggers my anxiety like no other. When I was doing research about Burmese pythons, I kept reading stories about them killing pets, children, and even their owners. So now, I'm freaked out and have barely slept for four months. This is made worse by the fact that my husband has no experience with large snakes, and the larger the python grows, the more it shows, and also by us having a cat. The other snakes we've had, our corn snake and my husband's old garter snake, pose no threat, but now, I constantly worry that the python is going to get out and eat her. I've taken to locking the cat in our bedroom at night, which interferes with our sleep since she meows and scratches at the door, and I constantly worry about her when she's home alone. I'll reiterate, this thing is fucking huge. He is already six feet long. I'm home more than my husband, so I have to feed it and change its substrates often. I hate doing both. So much. Especially now that he's graduated to eating rabbits and pigs. I honestly think that since my husband bought him without consulting me that caring for it should be his sole job, but I'm not going to let it go hungry or live in its own waste out of pride. I honestly don't think we'll be able to give this snake the best quality of life, which I think is essential for all pets. He's getting too big for the tank he's in, which is his third since we've gotten him, and I don't think we have the room in our house for the enclosure my husband wants to build him. His food is very expensive and eating into our savings, but it's what he needs, so we can't downgrade. The python does not deserve to live in a tiny space and eat inadequate food because my husband wanted one as a kid. At the same time, it's a good possibility it could eat us out of house and home. I don't want kids while we own a python, and these things can live up to 20 years. I don't want to never have children, which I've dreamed of, because of a python. Because of all these reasons, but especially the ones about our cat and its quality of life, I think we should rehome the python, preferably to a wildlife sanctuary or something. I've gently brought all of this up to my husband. How much mental anguish it causes me, how worried I am for our cat, how the snake is unsustainable, and all he's done is tell me to get over it, accuse me of not caring about his happiness, and tell me I'm being prejudiced against animals that aren't cute and cuddly. None of this is true, not even the last accusation. I liked his smaller snakes a lot. How can I communicate productively with my husband about this issue? He already loves this snake, and I think that's getting in the way of him seeing reason. Update 1. Now I just want to say at the beginning so what everyone wants to hear is heard. The snake is gone, and my cat is alright. Here's how it happened. Thursday night, while I was replying to people in my post, several people suggesting talking to my husband's friend, who owns Burmese pythons, is an experienced reptile keeper, and could be a huge help. I was too blinded by the situation, my own anxiety to even think of that. I messaged him on Facebook Thursday night, and told him the situation. He was shocked at just how bad things were. But apparently he tried to warn my husband that owning small snakes and then jumping to a berm is like thinking owning house cats makes you qualified to own a tiger. But my husband didn't listen. He's been busy going to reptile shows. Dude breeds venomous cobras. He's kind of a badass. So he only saw the snake in person once when we just got it and was immediately disturbed when I told him about the overfeeding, my husband's desire to start it on live food, and the fact that it free roams and is handed alone. He told me he'd come over the next day, Friday, and give my husband a real talking to, as well as do anything he could to help us rehome it. I decided I couldn't live another day in the house like that, and neither could my cat. So Friday morning, I moved out to my mother's while my husband was at work. It was a bit sneaky, but I knew that if I tried to leave while he was home, he'd try to convince me to stay. I called him on his lunch break though, and told him I'd left until the snake was gone. He was very upset, but started accusing me of being so petty as to let a snake wreck our marriage. I had nothing productive to say to that, so I told him I'd talk to him later. 
Well, my husband's friend was so angry at what he saw of the snake that when he got to the house when my husband was home from work, he gave him the tongue lashing of his life and told him in plain terms that now that he saw how woefully inadequate we were as big snake keepers, there was no way he was going to let the snake stay at our house. Being yelled at really affected him. When my husband drove over to my mother's to talk to me, he looked like a kicked puppy. He broke down and told me that he loved me, that he was sorry for the hell he'd put me through, and that it had taken having reason yelled to him by an expert for him to really see what was going on, and that he understood now that the snake could no longer live with us. I know that at that point, that the sorrow he felt was due to having his snake taken away, not of real understanding, not yet. So don't worry, he's not completely off the hook. It was cathartic to hear, though. His friend contacted a herpetology society he works with regularly. And then, a member of that society whose specialty is rehabilitating snakes that irresponsible pet owners get and then mistreat on his ranch. So Snake went yesterday to this guy's ranch, where he'll be fed the right food and go on a diet, apparently, and live in a space big enough for him. My husband and I have talked a lot about this, and he acknowledged that his fervent desire to fulfill his childhood dream made him careless and selfish, that he wasn't trying to be malicious towards me, but he just wanted the snake so badly he'd do and say anything to keep it. It still seems like, though, that he hasn't learned, which I'm not expecting this early, but is still a mite disappointing. He talked yesterday about getting a ball python, and I put my foot down. I don't think we should get another snake for a long time. On Sunday, I sat him down and asked him to tell me the truth of how he got the python, because walking into a pet shop for a milk snake and just finding a Burmese was sounding more and more implausible the more I thought about it. He admitted that he arranged to get one with a breeder online while he was telling me he wanted a little snake, meaning he was actively lying to me. This breeder is also a state away, meaning my husband participated in something illegal when he met up with him to get it, since transporting Burmese pythons across state lines is against the Lacey Act. I'm very angry about this. I'm upset about his lies, and I'm upset that he blew me off for months. He admitted he lied just because he knew I'd say no, which shows such an immaturity that almost disgusts me. I'm upset that he broke the law. I'm upset that he only listened to what I told him when it came from someone else. Apparently, he's been having a quarter-life crisis that he didn't tell me about, because he feels that he should have accomplished more with his life at 26. He never went to college. I feel sympathy for him with that, but that's no excuse to treat me badly. I moved back home with Kitty last night, but our marriage is in severe jeopardy right now due to the lying and the lack of respect my husband has shown me. But I made vows to stick with him, and I don't take those lightly. We're going to be getting counseling, which I hope will make him really see what was wrong with what he did, rather than a knee-jerk response to being in trouble, so to speak, and will strengthen us. If not, well, I'll have to consider my options. Update 2. On the surface, therapy has been going well. My husband has been doing everything right. He's been contrite, open-minded, and treats me like a princess at all times. I can tell at home that he's making a conscious effort to listen to my opinions and thoughts and incorporate our therapist's suggestions into our lives. I feel like the hugest bitch saying this, but I don't think it's enough. Over these past weeks, I've had to come to terms with the fact that something about how I view my husband has fundamentally changed. And finally, after extensive soul searching a few days ago, I realized what it was. I have no respect for his intelligence anymore after all this. That is very, very important to me, and now it's just gone, and I don't know how it can come back without him getting a personality overhaul. It's killed my physical attraction to him. I normally have a high libido, and prior to all this, we made love four to five times a week. Now, since all this went down, we've been intimate three times. To be fair, while Snake was here, we were down to two to three times a week, but it was still more frequent than this. Despite all the changes he's making, he's still himself, and I don't think I can like who I know him to be now. He's still his goofy, absent-minded self who needs me to balance the checkbook and pack his lunch. I can't respect that anymore. I don't want to be his mom or a naggy sitcom wife. I used to love doing these things for him. Throughout our relationship, I've taken care of him, patched him up, and helped him solve his problems. I always saw it as the ultimate expression of love. Now I'm just sick of it. He can tell something's still wrong. He's irritated about my lack of forgiveness and lack of a sex drive lately when he's objectively doing all the right things. But his lack of understanding towards my apprehension makes my feelings even more pronounced. I realized the other day 
that I love him dearly as a friend. I've known him since I was nine years old, but no longer as a husband. That devastates me. I can't believe I'm thinking divorce after less than a year of marriage. I feel like such a failure. I haven't broached these feelings in therapy yet because they crystallized only a few days ago, but I don't know how to start because I know saying them will mean my marriage will be over. I have talked to my mom and friends about this, and they all tell me to wait longer, to stick it out, because I made vows, but I feel like I found out something fundamental about my husband that I wish I never had, and that nothing can be the same now. Update 3 Basically, my ex-husband brought home a Burmese python after telling me he wanted a milk snake, I was really scared of it and anxious, and he was dismissive of my worries. I ended up getting the snake shipped off to a reptile ranch, but it absolutely shook my trust in my ex, because he was lying to me. It also made me realize he relied on me to do everything for him like a second mother, and that I hated that. I really tried to work through the feelings I posted in the second update, but after three months, we separated. It's totally okay if you judge me for this because I judge myself. After being separated for half a year, we ended up having sex. My grandma had just died, I was devastated, and he came to the funeral to support me, and because he'd known her forever and loved her too, we went home together after the family lunch, and we ended up having comfort sex. Neither of us wanted kids at that point, but my IUD had slipped into my cervix at some point before this, and I ended up getting pregnant. Both of us were unsure about introducing a kid into our relationship, but decided to get back together and make another effort. I had always wanted to be a mom, and didn't want to abort. We found out pretty early into the pregnancy that it was actually a molar pregnancy, meaning that instead of a normal fetus, I was pregnant with a tumor. I had the mole removed, but I was one of those lucky people who develops cancer from their molar pregnancy. Luckily, the cancer was caught when I was only at stage two and responded really well to chemotherapy. I've been cancer-free since 2016. However, my ex's behavior when I was extremely sick from chemo, we had stayed together after losing the pregnancy, caused me to put my foot down and want to divorce. He wouldn't, or couldn't, pick up the slack around the house, and I couldn't deal with it anymore. I felt like I couldn't depend on him for anything, not even when I had cancer. Literally a week after I was told I was cancer-free, I told him I was moving out and wanted a divorce. I lived with my mom for a year while our divorce was being finalized and, and a bit after it, and then decided to get a job in a new city because I needed a new beginning. I also decided to fulfill a dream of mine I'd been mulling over for a while and went back to college to get my BSN in 2017. I graduated in 2019 because I was in an accelerated program for people who already have another degree, and I now work as a neonatal nurse. The job can be really wearing and difficult, but it's so amazing watching tiny and sick babies grow and thrive and eventually leave. I feel like I found my calling. I also met a guy in my class when I went back to school. We were just friends for two years because I didn't feel ready to date. And then in 2019, we started dating. That guy is now my husband. We got married in 2022. My current husband is the most amazing man and partner I could have ever asked for. I can fully lean on him and him on me. And I don't have to ask him to please pick his socks up off of the floor. He even does most of the cooking because I hate cooking. Due to my cancer treatment, I went into premature ovarian failure so we are going to start IVF in the new year with eggs I had frozen before my chemo began. We also want to adopt and or foster at some point and have been looking into that as well. I know for sure my husband is going to be a wonderful support for me and an amazing father. At the time of my divorce, I had no confidence my ex would be either of those things. I don't want to just bash my ex though. He is doing much better since we got divorced. A month after I left for good, he attempted suicide and was put on a 72-hour hold at the hospital. He took their advice to follow up with a psychiatrist seriously and was diagnosed with ADHD. It explains so much about how he was when we were together. A little later on, he was also diagnosed with autism. I don't speak to my ex because it's too painful for both of us, but my mom is still close to his mom and has given me some updates. He's taking medication that's really helped his ADHD and was able to go to trade school. He has a much better job now and has been in a steady relationship. I wish him all of the best. I look back on my old posts and all I can do is shake my head. I was putting up with so much I would never put up with now. I also, though I was so grown up because I was 24 and married, but clearly I still had maturing to do.
Part of me feels sad for my ex too, because he was struggling for so long and I was writing him off as unhelpful. However, even though he had a medical reason for being inconsiderate, I still had to do what's best for me and I was at my breaking point. Considering his success, I think we're better off without each other. Oh. And I still talk to my ex's friend, the cobra breeder, from time to time. Bucatini, the Burmese python, is still doing great in his new home.